You know, every day consumers are bombarded with subtle and sometimes not so subtle signals on which products to buy. Joining us with the tricks of the trade is one of the world's premier marketers, Martin Lindstrom. He is the author of Brand Washed, an insider's <laughs> look at the techniques that companies use to manipulate our minds. Welcome, Martin. Nice to have you here. It's a great read. <laughs> Thank you. Very, very revealing. Um, Good. But you decided you decided to write it because you wanted to detox from brand washing. Oh, tell yeah. me about that. I tell you, Sue, this was a nightmare. I didn't want to use brands for a whole year. Well, guess what happened? Everything was perfect the first half year. I did not buy one single brand. Then my plane landed in Cyprus, of all places, where I had to do a keynote speech. My suitcase was lost. I had to go into a key can buy a I love Cypress t-shirt in white <laughs> and I gave up and it was like the floodgates was just opening and I just kept buying and buying brands in the end of the day so here we go half a year experiment all right you know one of the things that we wanted to do is take a look at some of the examples that you set out in the book and talking about how companies have very successfully been able to influence how we buy and keep coming back Whole Foods is one of the companies that you point to in your book and and other, other addresses that you've made, they really have it down to a science. How do they do it? It's amazing stuff. And I love Whole Foods, but they also are, and don't forget that, a theater. Uh, they are setting the stage using the concept of fresh to the extreme degree. Remember, if you walk into a retail store and they're cutting fresh flowers and you go straight into the vegetable department, well, then you're primed to believe everything is fresh in that retail store. Well, what if I reversed the whole scenario and told you that there would be canned of soups and the expiration date would be four years, then you'll believe everything will be old in the retail store. So what Whole Foods is doing is they use the fresh to the extreme degree. And not only that, think about this. I'm not sure if you're aware of this, Sue, but if you walk anti-clockwise around the retail store, you actually spend $2 more on average and up to 7% more. So the design the retail 7%? store... 7%? Yes, 7%. Just because you walk around in the store in a certain way and grab things with your right hand. So really what this comes back to is they're using every signal you possibly can imagine, first of all, to believe that things are fresh. For right. example, they have crushed ice, they have this huge dummy of cardboard boxes, which looks like the farmer was just off-roading them from the farm, and all that makes us want to pay more and buy more. Let me get your opinion on this one, Martin. Stay with us here, because I want to show you... Um, and get your take on another company that pays an awful lot of attention to the customer experience. As you may know, Scott Wapner uh, did a documentary that's airing tonight. He spent a lot of time with Starbucks and the man at the company that has been hired to enhance the brand and the customer loyalty. Take a listen. Good. Alex can help you right over at the second register. Schultz focused on the front lines. He retrained thousands of baristas and brought on Arthur Rubenfeld, a trained architect with an have. eye for detail. The barista should never turn their backs on the customer. And that is why in all Starbucks stores, the espresso machines always are on the front counter. A lot of conversations were held about placement of this bar. And we decided to put what we call the theater towards the window line. We talk about it as, as theater, sure. as the experience. It's just a coffee place. People are you just know, coming in to get their coffee and go. To us, it's much, much more than that. Rubenfeld claims these subtle touches create the feel of an authentic coffee house and therefore enhance the Starbucks experience, a word they apply to almost every aspect of their business. The coffee addiction, which airs tonight on CNBC. Martin, why can't the baristas, the people behind the counter, turn their back on you? Well, because if you're not looking people in the eyes, what well, means you're actually buying up to 30% less because you feel you can't trust the person. I'm sure you try to be in a job interview and when you're looking at the person, you can't catch his eyes. And because of that, you don't trust that person and therefore you don't want to deal a deal with that person. That's quite, that's quite dangerous for a big brand, though, to have the personality of the individual they've got working there so ingrained in the experience, isn't it? I it mean, is. couldn't that work the other way around? I suppose you're just very careful about who you employ. 
Absolutely, and it did for Starbucks for a while. If you remember a couple of years ago, Starbucks was not doing very well. In fact, the share price was going down, and most importantly, it didn't smell of coffee, and the people were pretty rude behind the counter. They changed that when the founder came back, and what they try to do now is to create this authentic market feel. You kind of feel like you're back in some market in Italy, and I think what's interesting here is that all the fMRI studies and neuroscience studies we've conducted shows that we actually prefer to live in the past because we are fundamentally nostalgic people. And so if they can create that feeling of the past by playing the Beatles music, which they do right now, right. and you have those old signs, that makes you buy more. All right. Well, listen, if you read this book, everybody out there, you will never shop the same way again. Until you go to Cyprus. Until you go to Cyprus, exactly. <laughs> Martin, good luck. Nice to have you here. He's Thank the you. author of Brandwash.